G'day guys, Dizzy Dave coming at you once again from Down Under with another Hot Toys review. That's right, today we are taking a look at a figure which has just been released by Hot Toys. It is, of course, as you can see on the cover here, SW7 R2D2. Star Wars Episode 7 R2D2. Well, can you really call it a Force Awakens action figure? Because R2D2 sort of looks the same throughout most of the movies, doesn't he? Anyway, let's crack into this and have a look. And here we go, the R2D2 Hot Toy. Well, this is the uh, shipper box. I'm going to take it out of it, so let's do it. So there it is, right there, the Star Wars Force Awakens R2-D2 action figure. Now, nothing on the box actually says Force Awakens. Uh, the only thing that does say Force Awakens is the shipper box where it says Star Wars 7. This was originally uh, advertised as a Force Awakens figure, but when we open it up and have a look, what I've seen from sort of in-hand pictures from the final release of this, it's more of an original trilogy R2-D2 for the sake that he's beat up and just a couple of little things that are sort of more in line with his design from the original trilogy than uh, episode 7, but really it's just R2-D2 in the end, so had to get him for my collection and he will be going in my display with my original trilogy action figures. I mean, he has to. Let's crack it open and take a look. I love the Star Wars ones, how they have like this nice little picture inside here. Uh, here's another little nod to Episode 7, we got BB-8 in the back here. Uh, I of course have a little BB-8 in my collection, he's fantastic and... But I'm so excited to finally have R2-D2, so let's, let's just get him out, let's get him out of here. Now I feel like this is probably going to be my shortest Hot Toys unboxing ever because this little guy comes with zero accessories. That's right, it's just little R2-D2 by himself. You don't need any accessories. Again, it keeps the it keeps the price down on these things. There is a Sideshow Collectibles version of R2-D2, I think from Return of the Jedi. Comes with a bunch of different accessories from all three of the movies. That figure is actually cheaper than this one, but what I've seen, pictures, videos of it, it's really flimsy, it's really cheap plastic and just looks cheap so i'm happy to spend just a little bit of extra money to get the hot toys version which by all accounts is is a much better figure let's pull him out let's take a look oh okay he's out that was pretty quick i really like this guy he's got a little bit of weight he's top heavy that's because the dome here is die cast we've got die cast metal dome which is awesome the sideshow one is just plastic complete plastic Get a real close up look at that die cast dome on him right there. It's awesome and it is, it's really, like I said, he's top heavy. The rest of his body is really light, it's just it's just plastic. It doesn't feel cheap though, it's nice, it's sturdy, it's, it's hard. But yeah, again, just be careful with this guy because he's very, very top heavy. I really like the design on this, he's nice and beat up, he's sort of battle worn. It's like he's been sitting around for, for many, many years like he has in The Force Awakens. Lots of dust underneath him there and uh, uh, he's just sort of just looks like he has been through the wars the uh, the Star Wars Look, there really isn't much to say about him because it's just a little R2-D2. There's obviously not a lot of articulation or anything with this like any of the other figures. We've got a fair bit of articulation in the arms here, which is uh, which is quite cool. I mean, that's, that's very, very articulated. That's 360 degrees, which is quite cool. This here, they move. This moves. It goes in, comes out. That moves around. So there's a fair decent bit of articulation in the, in the legs there. His head, of course, spins around so you can sort of position his head however you want it. That goes 360 degrees as well. You can sort of see why in a minute. One other little thing that I do need to note about this guy is he's got little wheels on his bottom. So yes, you can wheel him around, which is awesome. This is a real sort of rope sort of thing. It's not like plastic. And look, that's just a great look at the R2-D2 Hot Toy. There's really not much else I can say about this guy. Uh, he does have one cool little feature, which we're going to have a look at now. Uh, as I said, the dome spins around where you can actually... If I can, there we go. His dome pops off and under here, we have got a place where we can put some batteries. Now, see this guy doesn't come with many accessories. That is literally all he comes with, batteries and a little remote control. Now, I'm gonna try and get these batteries in here. Trying to get batteries in a hot toy is always a pain in the bum. So let's open this up and we're gonna put this in fast motion just so we can, just so we can speed this up. Okay, we flicked that on, we flicked it on under there. Let's pop R2-D2's head on and uh, just suss out what this guy does. I'm kind of excited to see this. 
Oh, instantly he's lit up in a bunch of places. Let's zoom in here. This little light here has lit up, which is cool. We've got these little flashing lights here, which is also awesome. How good is that? Look at him, so that is definitely, see there's a little light on there. His little projector. You can actually move that around too. There's a bit of articulation in there, so you can have that point wherever you want, which is cool. And then his back here has lit up as well. He's just, he's flashing. Well, he was flashing a second ago, I don't know. Let's wait, how do we? He sort of stopped flashing now. Um, we have this remote here. I believe if we press the buttons, he should do stuff. I mean, that's lighting up, but it's not doing anything. If you have struggles with this, this does come with a little booklet that should explain what to do, how this guy works. I'm actually going to have to have a look at the booklet this time and just sort of figure this out because it's a little bit fiddly. So it turns out this is actually touch activated. So you touch this and it sort of it activates a different lighting mode. There you go. So now he's flashing again. There we go. We get a good... There we go. Okay, so we've got it working now. That's cool. It's like a touch activated thing. You gotta put a little bit of pressure on there to activate it. So let's try the remote control now and see if it actually does anything. It's not, it's just not, I gotta read this book. Now I believe he does have sound effects. And it's supposed to go off when you press this, but mine's just sort of not. This is the infrared receiver right here apparently, and this gives off like a little infrared sort of light, as you can see. He's just not. I don't know why, he's just not making a noise. Okay, all right, I've been playing around with this for just a little bit. This here is the infrared section on the remote control, just on the end there, so you gotta point that towards the eye, you gotta keep it within two meters and... How cool is that? To be honest, it's more of a novelty than anything. It's not like you're going to be pulling this remote out and making R2 make noises every single day. But it's a nice little touch. And I'm not sure if the Sideshow one actually has lights and sound. But I think it's just fantastic. Take a really close look at this dome. Now if we look at his lights on his back here. Let's turn this down so we can see those lights properly. The design of the lights on the back here with that sort of rainbow effect thing, that's the design that this guy has in the original trilogy. In episode seven and in the, the prequels, they changed that design. It's not so rainbow effect, but that's really his sort of episode four look. I think that's a nice little touch because that does mean that this guy doesn't have to be shoehorned in with an episode seven collection. It just means that this guy can be relevant to whatever collection you have there. I'm sure eventually they'll release like an episode 4R2 that's sort of more sort of accurate to the original films but I don't care this is all I need I may be pretty pedantic with my collection at times but that's not something that's going to stop me enjoying this guy and having him in my collection as soon as possible I really love this guy I, he costs about $300 which again is sort of on the uh, sort of on the lower end of what these guys can cost you these days I'm still waiting for a C3PO they've shown him off at comic conventions and stuff but he's my next one for my collection but really that's all I need to show you with this guy now we're going to go and chuck him in my collection and do a quick wrap up So once again, that was the R2-D2 action figure from Star Wars Episode 7 from Hot Toys. As you've seen, he fits in perfectly well with my original trilogy collection. Now, I'm not waiting around for a original trilogy or Episode 4 R2-D2 or whatever else. I don't need a ton of accessories or anything. This guy's got the die-cast dome. He's got light-up features. He's got sound features. I mean, they're a little bit gimmicky, but they're a nice addition. Makes you feel like you're getting a little bit more value for your money. And like, if I want to open up my, my Hot Toys display and have people around, I can turn the lights on it. It looks like a nice dynamic display. 
So that's kind of cool. But it's not something that I'm gonna I'm gonna play with every single day of my life. You go, oh, let's let's go play with the lights and the sound and the R2D2. No, probably not. But uh, but it is a nice little addition, and I think overall it's a, it's a really great piece. Uh, I'm still waiting for the C3PO figure. They have teased him at Comic Cons and stuff. He has the red arm from Force Awakens, but I also think that there's an additional arm that you can plug on, which is the gold arm, so it makes it more original trilogy. He just doesn't have the silver leg that he has in Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. But I'll hide the leg behind O2D2 and you'll never know. And again, Episode 7 C-3PO will become original trilogy C-3PO. So he is available from anywhere you can buy your Hot Toys right now. Go and grab him before they sell out. I mean, Hot Toys take a while to sell out these days, but the Star Wars ones, more than any other ones, sort of go out of stock pretty, pretty quickly. Although in the past they have reissued Star Wars figures, so uh, really you're always going to be able to get him. So, so go ahead, grab that guy. I'm really impressed with him, really happy. He's sitting there in my collection. I love how he looks. Just give me that C-3PO. Uh, if this is the first time you've viewed one of my my videos and you've liked what you've seen and you'd like to see some more then please after the jump do me a big solid and hit subscribe to all my regular viewers out there thank you once again for joining me to absolutely everybody i hope i'll see you again soon until next time though guys take care and i hope you have a magical day